was like, you know, he knew that I would, I used to ask a lot, lot of questions to my father and, you know, he was always patient, answering them and I miss him like, you know, waking up early in the morning and, you know, doing his riyas, wherein, you know, he um, always made these, I mean, I always tell him as a child that why do you make these weird voices and he would say like, oh, this is the practice and this is how you tone your voice, you know, correctly and then him coming to our rooms every night and he would not ever sleep because he was a busy man too and he had a lot of recordings and he had a lot of students coming um, you know he was he had set up a free music school in Kashmir wherein you know he would make sure that you know we would have more and more people would get the platform to sing present their talent whatever talent they had so he would never ever like even if he was late he would always come to our rooms and then kiss us good night and he would never you know sleep without it and I think those are the memories that I always would treasure and still do. Arafat I'm absolutely shocked hearing your story and I'm feeling like emotional right now. I don't know how to go about this interview. But I would like to ask you, like, you're since a student of filmmaking and maybe you have some interest in music, have you ever tried to recollect the songs your father sung and have you ever tried to sing being on your father's steps? No, I think uh, I am creative in a way as in my father was creative and I think uh, he was a musician. I don't think I'm, I have a good voice, you know, I always thought that I have a bad voice. I don't know, I mean, I've never tried like singing, singing, but then yeah, I think one of the ways of channelizing your creativity is that you go into a different field and I think uh, my field is filmmaking and I, I feel it's very therapeutic also, you know, it helps me tell stories of other people and in, in a way sort of, you know, it's very reflective too. Cause uh, there was a time when media reported my dad's death. Each media outlet had a different story to tell. Tell. Nobody knew what exactly had happened to my dad. But everyone, like his son, said, "Okay, he must have fallen off the train." Some said he was, he might be smoking, or he must have fallen. Some said, like, you know, everyone had like a different story to tell. And this is when I realized, I said, like, okay, this is such a powerful tool because people start believing in in the media that they read or consume. I want to become a filmmaker, where you know I could tell the stories of people who have stories, especially that are not truthfully being told by by India. So that's why uh, I took up this uh, as a profession. This happened exactly when I started working for the not-for-profit not organization which was again an American organization and they gave me the opportunity to do documentary filmmaking even though I wasn't trained at that point in time and I did a lot of work with them uh, and until I decided now I need to sort of you know hone my skills and you know try and do it in a better way and that's why where I am right now. So did you try to imitate your father while he was singing or even if I, I'm sure that you might be listening to his recordings so do, do, you, do you ever try to sing like how he used to sing because he had an amazing voice? I, I mean, yes, I think like <laughs> I do have